We're in San Antonio, Texas today at the Texas Federation of Republican Women's State Convention with Texas State Senator Glenn Hager and Texas State Controller Susan Combs. Welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Thank Glad you. Glad to have you here today. Great to be here, Bob. Glenn, you're running for the, to replace Susan Combs That's as correct. Controller of Texas. Not replace, but succeed her. Yes. And uh, this morning we had some really exciting announcement for your, your campaign where Ms. Combs uh, endorsed Glenn Hager for the office. So tell us a little bit about your campaign and we'll talk to Ms. Combs. More than happy to. The campaign is going great, traveling around the state of Texas. You know, those of us in the Senate, when you have 21 counties, you think that's a big place. But Texas, 254 counties, it's a big, big state. But Texas, our economy is going great. The campaign is going great. And I'll tell you, there is no better friend than Susan Combs. And to have her help and support, Susan has done a tremendous job, in my opinion, fighting for open government, for transparency. And it's only my honor and privilege to continue to continue that legacy that Susan has fought so hard for over the last six and a half, seven years. Well, Susan, you've been a great public servant for the people of the state of Texas, and we want to thank you for that. Why, why Glenn Hager to replace you? Well, um, as I said this morning, that having had seven years on the job, I have some pretty strong views about who should fill that job. And you want somebody who loves public service, you want somebody who is conservative, you want somebody that understands that business is the engine that drives the economy and not government. And uh, Glenn is a fighter. He has proved his ability to fight and to uh, bring efficiencies out of government, and I trust him. Uh, I trust him to be smart, to be thoughtful, to be careful, to be conservative. And it's a big job, and I, um, I believe he's going to fill my shoes up admirably. Well, he's not quite as tall as you are, but he can maybe fill the shoes there. That, that would be great. Well, it, again, it's somebody that really cares about Texas and understands that every single dime government spends is the individual's That's money. Right. And when he was uh, on the Sunset Commission and, and heading of the effort to look at all those agencies, that was absolutely every approach that he took, and I very much admire all of his work. Now, as you serve out your final months in, in office here in, in the state of Texas, what issues are facing Glenn if, when he takes that position? Um, I think there's going to be a continuing debate going forward about how we deal with some of the infrastructure issues, roads, etc. Uh, education is going to keep coming right. back up, fueled right. by uh, lawsuits, but um, those are issues that he's admirably well suited to deal with, mm -hmm. and I think um, the, the fact that we're going to be a growing state, Time Magazine is coming out with an article that says that Texas is going to be what the United States is. And he has the opportunity in the Rolls Comptroller to help shape policy, uh, drive decisions through the information that he provides the legislature, and as uh, a well-known and well-respected member of the House and the Senate, he's going to be well-received, uh, well-regarded, and obviously well-respected. Now, Senator, Texas is blessed with an income from our oil and gas revenues, yes, yes. and we hope that will continue to increase. How do you manage that fluctuation of not knowing exactly what's going to be coming in for the state over over this period? No, of time? that's a that's a great question. You've seen here in Texas. I'm blessed to represent part of the Eagleford Shell and live mm -hmm. in Katy there in the Energy Corridor, and so we see firsthand both from the parts of the east and the western parts of my Senate district, and you see the Permian Basin in Midland. Unbelievable what's going on here in Texas, and the Comptroller's Office plays a lead role as the face, the chief financial officer of the state of Texas, of what is the vision for Texas and also as you manage what is the reasonable estimates that the legislature has. Mm -hmm. What is the dollars that they have to spend and how do you conservatively move them in a direction to be most fiscally prudent as they can be with those dollars. And I think the most important thing is you stay very engaged on a continual month-to-month, day-to-day basis of what are those numbers. And it's dynamic. It's not just statewide, it's not just nationally, but it's internationally driven. Mm -hmm. And so the oil and gas industry is internationally driven, but we are blessed here. And I think the most important thing is you have a lot of smart people at the Comptroller's Office. You have very competent staff that gives you the right information so you can make the right decisions. But you continue to make sure that the legislature and the people of the state of Texas are continually updated on what are those revenue estimates. And as, as you have more refined, better numbers, you continue to put those out. One of the things that impressed me uh, recently, we were at the Texas Right to Life banquet when they gave you an award for your, your service, particularly in passing the, the bill that protects life here in Texas. They mentioned how meticulous you are. I mean, really driving all the details and all the facts and, and that type of thing. And I think that's a, a trait that we need in, in a comptroller. 
Where does that come from? Well, it's just really the way the way I've always grown up. You know, my family's businesses. I've learned from my grandfather. I've learned from my great uncles. I was blessed to grow up in a family business to where I had a lot of a lot of individuals who taught me one what is a hard day's work that actually the money that we earn we also have to pour back into the business and that you have to meticulously understand what is it that you have and how can you invest it and how do you make smart decisions and that transcends over into my legislative experience that you've got to make sure that you know every single detail that if there is a stone unturned then that might be a trap that causes a significant problem in the legislative process and obviously as the chief financial officer for the state of Texas if you leave a stone unturned mm -hmm. that can cause a problem and so I really believe it's that meticulous, let's not leave a stone unturned nature that I've grown up with, that I'll bring those obviously set of skills with me to the comptroller's office. Susan, what else would you have to say about the office and, and uh, why Senator Hager should take that position? It's a big office and it takes a breadth of vision and energy and attention to detail. You really have to have all three, otherwise it's, it's, it's a big office, it's a big state, it's big responsibility. And Glenn is meticulous, and Glenn, uh, Glenn does have the vision, and he's got the energy to do it. Um, he's got a wonderful family who is supporting him, and that helps a lot. You really have to have that support to keep going day in and day out. And I trust him. That's really important. This is a job that I have loved, that I thought was so important, and uh, I wouldn't be endorsing him and supporting him to the degree that I am, which is very, very strong, if I did not trust his instincts, trust his adherence to conservative principles, trust his understanding of the core uh, beliefs of our public. And Glenn is going to do a fantastic, outstanding job. You know, one thing that we've proven as Republicans in Texas this year is we have a very deep bench. Uh, this race and several other races, we've got a lot of great candidates in these races. And I think your endorsement of Senator Hager goes a long way towards helping the voters make a decision on, on who should be the next controller of Texas. I want to thank you for coming to Texas GOP vote today. And Glenn, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the voters before oh, I we just, go? I just want to say I'd love for you to learn more about the campaign. And I want to earn everybody's respect and earn their vote individually. Susan's support and help, I think, is very significant because she has been such a strong leader here in the state of Texas. As I told the crowd earlier, I think that here in Texas, we could all agree that there has been nobody stronger here in Texas. That uh, I mentioned earlier that she's what I would call the Margaret Thatcher of our party here in Texas. And she, st she has strongly stood up for what's right. She believes it in her heart. Now, matching her energy level, I've got a lot of energy, but I'll tell you, that's tough. But I'm going to bring it to the Comptroller's office. And so I look forward to getting to know the voters of the state of Texas as we continue to travel and love to earn their respect and earn their vote to be the next Comptroller of the great state of Texas. Well, I want to thank both of you for taking the time this morning. I know your schedules are very busy, and we want to encourage everyone in the audience to take a look at, at all of the campaigns that are running statewide in Texas. We've got a lot of great candidates, and we need to get out the vote. Thank you very much for being here Thanks, today. Thanks, Bob. Great thank to see you, you again. Thank you.